These three books may be the same size, same color, and have the same cover, but I assure you that all three of these publications each explore their own unique complex ideas from the original concept all the way to other contemporary artists' responses 50 years later. Starting off with the original book, this is the abstract expressionist Willem de Kooning's Book of Drawings and was originally published in 1967. It's a pretty thin book that is simple in design and the cover consists of just the artist's signature in charcoal. I picked up this book from a local bookstore in Cleveland a year or two ago for only about 25 bucks and has truly been one of my favorite books to just flip through. You'll see this book's simplicity flows into the content inside but I really don't think that there's anything simple about his drawings whatsoever. Remember this first drawing only because it'll show up two more times. Well, they all will, but I'll make an effort to show off the first drawing of each book. This book consists of 24 charcoal drawings made in 1966 and have been reproduced to the exact size of the original drawings. While de Kooning is known for his women paintings, these gestural drawings of women give a lot of insight to the process of his work. It's fast, it's aggressive, and it's chaotic. He made all 24 of these drawings with his eyes closed while holding the paper pad horizontally and often starting the drawing from the middle of the paper. As I flip through these, you'll see how abstract these lines really are, and the marks seem really random, yet very intentional at the same time. Because there's no figure-ground relationship and all these figures are just floating on the paper, I think de Kooning was actively trying to dismantle the traditional notions, allowing viewers to solely rely on facial features to discern figures in the play of the thick and thin lines. Without the faces, we are just left with a pile of nonsense that honestly just looks like scribbles. But de Kooning's quoted as saying, The attitude that nature is chaotic and that the artist puts order into it is a very absurd point of view. I think all that we can hope for is to put some order into ourselves. Following that, we have Rita Ackerman's book in response to the original de Kooning's drawing book. This book was published in 2017 by Karma and has basically the exact same exterior of the book with the same size and same color, although this copy has a clear dust jacket and a line going through the de Kooning signature. Even though this book is new, it still has that false wear and tear look that the original publication has giving it a beat up appearance. You'll notice right away as I start to flip through that the original de Kooning's drawings are exactly the same on the right side of the spreads, but on the left side is where we get the original Ackerman drawings. She provides 18 original drawings in this book alongside the 24 de Kooning's. These graphite drawings were made in direct response to the drawings on the opposite pages, so we'll see a lot of similar poses, but maybe with a little bit more emotion from Ackerman. A lot of these drawings have more representational features in them, so you'll see similarities even though the drawings may not look the same in appearance. From my understanding, the concept is really about juxtaposition. She has her drawings in conversation with, but more so critiquing de Kooning's quote-unquote macho way of portraying women in his work. His women works have always been controversial, so she takes matters into her own hands, simultaneously laying claim to her own expansive and masterful drawing language. We get to see the importance of the line in her work as she has these expressionist strokes in her drawing alongside little bits of added color here and there. Her poses really emphasize and highlight the body of women, and her work feels very playful to me. She's not afraid to take risks in her work, whether that be erasing parts or excessively adding strokes. Some more complicated than others, but overall I think it's a refreshing take and a fun idea to have the juxtaposition of an old master's work next to a contemporary work, and I'm very pleased to have this book in the collection. The last book that we're going to take a quick look at is from the artist Eric Doringer. His whole art career has been centered around appropriation and him pushing the boundaries of what is an original idea. This is nothing new in the art world and has been a central theme leading all the way back to Marcel Duchamp and his ready-mades. This publication was published in 2016 and is very similar in appearance with the same cream off-white dust jacket but is a tad taller than the original and because of the nature of the idea the pages are more of a grayish tone so the eraser drawings can be more visible in print. And right when I flip it open you'll understand what I mean by drawings that have been erased. It's exactly what it sounds like. 
I absolutely love this book because Eric Doringer really pushes that limit and steals Robert Rauschenberg's idea to erase a de Kooning drawing. It was 1953 when Rauschenberg went to de Kooning's studio and asked him for a drawing that he would be able to erase. De Kooning was reluctant, but then agreed, and Rauschenberg got straight to work. He carefully created his own drawing by focusing on the removal of lines opposed to the accumulation of them. Fast forward a couple decades, Doringer actually erased an entire de Kooning book of drawings, and it's truly a genius idea. You'll see, or at least barely see, that every single one of the 24 de Kooning drawings have been carefully and meticulously been removed and quote-unquote erased. It's an interesting concept, especially because the final product is a printed publication, but I think this book is a strong idea as an art piece, especially when you have other de Kooning books to flip through side by side. I definitely recommend looking into Eric's work because I think he's fighting the fight no contemporary artist really wants to address, which is originality. And he's made some really good copycat books of other artists that we've looked at on this channel like Richard Prince and Jonathan Monk. Overall, these three de Kooning books, while they may look the same, are very different and I'm so glad I was able to flip through them for y'all and give you a little more insight to the process and ideas behind them. Make sure to leave a comment if you've enjoyed this video and come back next week for another one.